Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering .conf 18. Brought to you by Splunk. Hello everybody, welcome to Orlando. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage, and we're here at SplunkConf.conf 2018. The hashtag is SplunkConf18. My name is Dave Vellante, I'm here with my co-host Stu Miniman. Stu, it's great to be in Orlando again. Last year we were in DC. This is our seventh year covering Splunk.conf, and we've seen the company really move from essentially analyzing log files uh, on-prem in a perpetual license model to now a company that is permeating all of IT into the lines of business, security, IT performance, application performance, moving into IOT, uh, really becoming a mature company. Uh, it's a company with uh, $1.7 billion in revenue forecasted for this year. Uh, they, we're talking about a $17 billion market cap. They're growing at 36%. And they're a company, Stu, that, has success, that is in the process of successfully going from a perpetual license model to a renewable model. Splunk set the goal of being 75% renewable by 2020. It sounds like renewable energy, but, but repeatable, uh, renewable from a subscription standpoint. They're already there. So you're seeing that in the execution. This is your first dot conf, or conf as they like to say. Uh, you, we were at the ESPN Wide World of Sports Center. You saw what, what's the number, 8,000 people? Yeah, I think 8,000 at the show this year. It's a strong growth, and Dave, I, I've been hearing from the team for years, the excitement of the show, the passion of the show. Uh, saw like right over near where we were sitting, there's the whole group of, uh, uh, you know, that was the Splunk Trust. They've got the Fezes on, a lot of them have, you know, superhero capes on, uh, and you know, it's what you expect from a passionate, uh, you know, technical, uh, maybe, maybe even say geeky audience that things like, you know, we're, we're announcing the S3 API compatible storage, and everybody's like, yay, we are so excited for this. Um, it's, you know, hardcore techies. Well, what was um, the other big, big, big clap? Um, Screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> that, that's right, dark mode. We're going to go to dark mode. Right, they I, don't have to, I don't have to play with the CSS. <laughs> I mean, anybody that's played with a website, it's, you know, changing these things is not trivial, um, but yeah, right, I, I, I click a little button, and uh, right, the, the joke was, um, you know, this is the, the, the kind of bright one for the executives, but when I'm down in the gamer center, um, you know, I don't want this glaring screen here, so I, I, I can switch it over to dark mode, and yeah, people were pretty excited about that. So again, the roots of Splunk, it took log data and analyzed it, you know, Doug Merritt, uh, the CEO, uh, talked today, he's talking about making things happen with data, and I thought he did a really good job of, of laying out sort of the past, putting the past behind us in terms of, he said, I've been to, I can't tell you how many master data management classes, uh, trying to optimize the database, trying to codify business processes and harden those business processes. The problem is data is messy, and data is growing so fast. Business processes are changing so fast. The competition is moving so fast. Customers are changing. So you have to be able to organize your data in the moment. So, you know, the whole idea that, even go back to the early big data days in Hadoop, it was, the whole idea was to bring five megabytes of compute to a petabyte of data, and uh, no schema on write, or what some call schema on read. And Splunk was really part of that. Put the, the data, you know, get the data organized in a way that you can look at it in a moment, but then let the data flow. And so that has definite implications in terms of how you think about data. It's not trying to get the data all perfect so you can use it, it's trying to get the data into your data ocean, as we like to say, and then have the tooling to be able to analyze it very, very quickly. Uh, they announced uh, uh, Splunk 7.2 today, which is a big deal. Um, some things like, we'll talk about a few of the features, uh, obviously focused on performance, but one of the things they talked about was basically being able to split storage and compute. So previously, you had to add essentially a brick of storage and compute simultaneously. We've heard about these complaints for years in the converged infrastructure space. It's obviously a problem in the software space as well. Now, customers are able to add storage or compute in a granular fashion, and they're, they're cozying up to Amazon doing S3 compatible store. Yeah, I, I mean, Dave, uh, I, I love that message uh, that he put out there. You said, life is messy. Uh, you can't try to 
control the chaos. You, you want to be able to ride those waves of data, take advantage of them, um, not overly <laughs> make things rigid with structure because once you put things in place, you're going to get new data or something else going to come along and your structure is going to be blown away. So when you need to search things, you want to be able to look at them at that point in time, but be able to you know, ride those waves, flow with the data, uh, live the way your data lives. Uh, and that's definitely something that's, that re resonates in this community. Uh, and Dave, something I've, you know, watching this space, you know, as an infrastructure guy and watching the cloud movement, you know, there were a lot of reasons why traditional big data failed. And I kind of never looked at Splunk like most of those other big data companies. Yes, they had data, yes, they're part of the movement of taking advantage of data, but they weren't, you know, oh, well, we have this one tool that we're going to create to do it all. It's like some of the Hadoop players. Uh, they're playing with all the latest things. You want TensorFlow, you want to do with the AI, uh, the ML. Uh, Splunk is ready to take advantage of all of these new waves of technologies, and uh, they've done a couple of acquisitions like VictorOps uh, in, in the space. Uh, they, they keep growing, and the goal is, you, you, you mentioned the revenue, uh, but Splunk today has, I think it's 16,000 customers. Um, they have a you know, short-term goal of getting to 20,000, but with what they started talking about in the keynote today, uh, you know, Splunk next, they really want to be able to do an order of magnitude more customers, and you know, when you get great customer examples like Carnival Cruises, the CEO, I thought, you know, talked about the sea of data. Um, yeah. Lots of good puns uh, you know, in, in the keynote, there, but you know, mobile cities floating around and lots of data that they want to be able to get the customer experience and make sure the customer gets what they need and make sure that you know, Carnival knows what they have to make sure that they're running better and optimizing their business too. So great example, looking forward to talking to them on theCUBE. Well, and they, they have you know, many dozens, I think it's in last quarter, it was like 60 plus deals over a million dollars. They have many $10 million plus deals. Uh, that's an outcome of happy customers. It's not like they're trying to engineer those deals. I'm sure some of the sales guys would love to do that. Uh, but that's a metric that I think was popularized by the likes of Anil Boucheret at Workday, certainly Frank Slootman at ServiceNow. Uh, it's one that uh, Wall Street watches. And it, Splunk, it, it's an indicator. Splunk is doing some very, very large deals. It underscores the commitment that many customers are making to Splunk. Having said that, there are many more that are still smaller users of Splunk. There's a lot of upside here. And they're going into a serious TAM expansion. That's something that we're going to talk to, to Doug Merritt about. Um, making a acquisitions of a company, uh, Victor Ops was their most recent acquisition, sort of security orchestration and, and management. They're doing, the ecosystem is growing. They're doing bigger deals or, or partnerships with the likes of Accenture, you know, Deloitte is here, EY. Uh, Accenture actually has a huge space at this event. Uh, and those are indicators. I want to go back to something you said earlier about the failure of big data. Certainly big data failed to live up to the hype in many ways. Uh, you didn't see uh, a lot of wholesale replacement of traditional databases and EDWs. You did see a reduction in cost. That was the big deal. But clearly, enterprise data warehouses and ETL, they're still a fundamental part of people's data strategies, despite what Doug Merritt's saying, hey, just, you know, the, the, the data is messy and you just got to let it flow, That's essentially what he's saying. There is still need for structured data and, and mixing, sort of interacting structured and unstructured data, bringing transaction data and, and, and systems of, of intelligence together, analytic data. Um, but the one thing that big data did do in the Hadoop movement, it did a couple things. One is architecturally it pushed data out and, and back in the day, you had to get a big Unix box and stuff everything in there. It was your God box of data. And you had Oracle licenses and you know, Sun Microsystems you know, boxes, and it was very expensive. And you had a couple of people who knew how to get the data out. So the, the goal of democratizing data, what it did is it, it is, it is messy. Data went out to the, the, the distributed nodes and now the edge, um, and it, but it brought attention to the importance of data and the whole bromide of data-driven companies. And so now we're in a position to make a new promise, and that promise is AI, machine learning, uh, machine intelligence, which seems to be substantive. You know, we talk a lot on theCUBE, is this old wine, new bottle? Uh, and we had a, an event in New York you know, last month, and the consensus from a lot of practitioners and others in the room was, no, there's, there's something substantive here. The data substrate is now in place now it's all about taking advantage of it. Tooling is still complex, 
but, but emerging or, or evolving. And I think the cloud, to your point, is a huge part of that. By integrating data pipelines in the cloud, it dramatically simplifies the deployment model and the complexity of managing big data. Yeah, Dave, Dave as you said, uh, used to be you had these giant boxes and some of these uh, initiatives, I needed 18 months, you know, millions of dollars, and a large time you either need to be you know, a, a, a country or uh, you know, a multinational uh, company to be able to put this thing together. I remember one of the earliest uh, case studies that David Floyer did when we were looking at big data, it was how do I take that 18 month deployment and drive it down to more like a six week deployment. And when you talk about AI, ML, and deep learning, uh, the, the promise is that a business user should be, should be able to get answers in a much, much shorter window. Uh, so actionable uh, on that data, uh, be able to do things with it, not just looking backwards, but uh, you know, we, we hear the teams. I want to be able to be proactive, I want to be able to resp be responsive, I want to uh, you know, even really predict what my client is going to need and, and be ready for it. So as Doug Merritt said, the digital and physical worlds they're coming together, they don't stop evolving, they're organic, your data model has to be flexible, it's a, it's a sea of data, it's an ocean of data, it's not a confined data lake, uh, as John Furrier uh, and others like to say, and so I was happy to, to hear Doug Merritt talking about a sea, we use the term oceans, because that's really what it is. Um, and oceans are unpredictable, they're sometimes really harsh, they can sometimes be messy, um, but, but they're constantly evolving. And so I think that kind of metaphor works in this world of Splunk. Uh, we got two, two days here of coverage. A lot of customers coming on today. In fact, Splunk is one of those, those companies that puts many customers on the cube, which we love. We love to dig into the case studies. We've got some ecosystem partners, some of the big SIs are coming on. And of course, we're going to hear from some of the product people at Splunk, the go-to-market people, Doug Merritt will be on tomorrow, and a number of folks. I'm Dave Vellante, at D Vellante on Twitter. He's at Stu, Stu Miniman. Keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this short break. You're watching day one from Splunk Conf 18 in Orlando. Be right back. <laughs>